Hello everybody, it's me, Will, or hashtag baking actor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make pique en chagne, which is a French pear bread. I found the recipe out of this beautiful Breads of France book by Bernard Clayton, um, written in the 70s, and I know that seems a little dated, but this bread is so delicious that it doesn't matter. First step is to prep our pears, or prepare our pears, prepare. Prepare. I've got three different kinds of pears here. I got a Bartlett, and then a Bosch, and then this is called a Camis pear. So they all have a little bit of a different texture and a little bit of a different flavor because what we're gonna do is dice them up and mix them with some spices and then boil them down. So I'm putting about a half a cup of water over top of them. The secret ingredients are cardamom, I'm gonna put about three quarters of a teaspoon of cardamom, a half teaspoon of cinnamon. This room smells delicious. About half to a quarter teaspoon of ground pepper. So my pears are starting to get all of that beautiful flavor. See how they're bubbling up there? Just give it a little quick stir. So all that cooks in there. Okay, Okay. so all my water has boiled out here and it's not sticking to the sides or anything but there's no water left. So I'm gonna remove it from the pan so these stop cooking. Okay. Just like it was mashed potatoes, I'm taking a potato masher, you can do this with a fork if you'd like, and just mash. You can smell that cardamom which I was never introduced until I read a version of this recipe online. It's really floral and like I said, all three of these different kinds of pears cook at different rates and they have different water content and different flavors. So what you're gonna get by combining them all like that is an amazing amount of depth of flavor and really essence of the pear. We've gotta let it cool. Otherwise, we'll kill our yeast and cook our eggs. So we're gonna let this cool while we get our other stuff ready to go. While uh, this was cooking. I got my milk warm. You don't need to scald it, but you need to get it warm so that your yeast will bloom into it. So, right? I've got one packet of yeast or two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I'm going to pour this in here, whisk it around just a little bit. I'm going to put a pinch of sugar in here just to give the yeast something to eat. Set that aside. Other ingredients we got here are oil, two tablespoons, I'm just using canola oil, two and a half tablespoons of honey. This is what the yeast will eat once all of this is together. I forgot in my mise en place to get my salt out, but it's two teaspoons of salt. Kind of got that started. Now, you're thinking bread, yeast, flour, water, that's it, right? But this bread has eggs in it. I brought these two eggs to room temperature. I just put them out when I started prepping everything. Okay, in my safety bowl here, just in case there's a problem. I'm gonna put one egg into my mixture at a time. Mm, you can smell that honey in there. Start to be fragrant. Okay, so we got that kind of started. Now, here's for the hard part. Here's the part where we have to start alternating our heat so that we don't cook the eggs. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper in here because I just like that flavor of the pepper and the pear together, the two peas of the pesavery world. So, so our yeast has bloomed. Look how nice and frothy we got that going here. Okay, so this is warmer than this. Stir it up. You don't want to scramble your eggs. Now it's not going to scramble them. It's not that hot. But why I say that is because we're now warming this mixture up a little bit. Remember, this was pretty hot over here. Okay. So now you touch your bowl. It's, your bowl is a little bit hot. So now what we got to do is just with just a little bit. I I just take a little bit from my right here with my whisk, stick it in here, and mix. 
And what that does is warms this up down here a little bit at a time. So we're basically tempering our egg mixture, cooling this down, warming this up. Also don't want to kill your yeast. And if you just poured that in there, you'd have scrambled eggs and killed yeast. Okay. So now we've got a just warm to the touch mixture. Now is when we start actually making the dough. So first step, cover this water mixture with two cups of flour. Okay. Taking, you can use a wooden spoon, but I happen to have a spurtle and it goes nicely down the sides. We're just going to start mixing this in. The goal is to get a bit of a shaggy mess. That's what it says in the book, a shaggy mess. Okay, got those two in, so I'm going to add one more for sure. There we go. Shaggy, stringy mess. Now, okay, I'm going to put just a little bit more flour in the bowl before I turn it out. This is my fourth cup. The rest of this flour, put it here and go ahead and get another full cup on the ready. Now, we're out of the bowl, there's no going back. Okay, this is your little friend. Say hello to him and allow him to help you. All right, you want him to be able to scrape off the bottom here. We've got all this beautiful dough over here. Scrape off the bottom here. My hand in it. Starting to hold the shape a little bit. So that means we're getting some gluten in there and resistance built up. Got my dough ready here. I've kneaded it. It's been approximately four minutes. Getting all the flour incorporated. Okay. It's still a little sticky, but it does let go of my hand. Okay. So, I believe it to be ready. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I've pre-greased a bowl. Watch this. See, it doesn't stick to my hand. It's only sticking to the part that was already on my hand. It's not sticking to the warmth of my hand because this hand is pretty clean, okay? So, I'm gonna make it into a ball. I've pre-greased a bowl. Let's stick it in the bowl cover it, stick it in the oven with a light on, which is about 75 degrees, the perfect temperature for bread to proof. Proofs for one hour, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so the last time we saw each other was about an hour ago. I put this in the oven and look how much it inflated. It's crazy, it yeah, puffed that stuff up. All right, so, you have aggressions, this is the time. Punch it. All right. We're gonna redistribute the yeast just a little bit. This is a really sticky dough, it's okay. I floured a surface here, coming out. We wanna keep these a little bit smaller for our household. So I'm gonna cut this into six pieces. Okay, so these have rested for about three minutes and now, it's time to shape them. I've lined two pans with parchment paper here, okay? And just make it into a little ball and then stick your finger right in the middle of it, okay? There's gluten built up, so it's gonna, it's gonna hold, right? And you wanna make it kinda look like a bagel. About an inch hole, just stretch that around and then stick it on your parchment paper. Okay, so it's been about an hour since we saw each other the last time. I covered these up and let them double in size, basically. The oven has been preheating for the last 30 minutes of this hour proof. And then at that time, I beat an, one egg with some, a tablespoon of milk so that it became room temperature as well because the milk was in the refrigerator, so it wasn't room temperature. So. The step here is to brush each one of these with this glaze. And then the customary thing for this in particular is to cut it. So cut like an even 
half inch down, but about a, uh, an inch or so between the hole that we put in the middle and the outside. Stick them in my 350 degree preheated oven for about 25 minutes, check them. Because these are small, calls for 40 minutes in the recipe, but I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, so our pico shan is complete. And it's been in the oven. These only took 20 minutes in the oven. <laughs> he looks like that old woman holding a pitchfork. No. <laughs> I feel like something's going to happen with this cheap knife. Now, good news is we got a taste tester. So, cut into that. Hear that? Mm -hmm. Sound. <laughs> Come on. Cut into it. Just cut it. Just cut it. Mmm. What does it smell like? It smells good. <laughs> Is it tasting good? Done perfectly. Good. Perfect. All right. Pick, so, pick on. Oh, oh, what is that peppery stuff? Pepper. No, oh, pepper. <gasps> oh, I finally got some pear in that one. Yeah. Pear, pepper, oh. cardamom, cinnamon. It's delicious. Delicious. If you like what I'm doing, follow my blog on willemery.com. Give me another piece. <laughs> All right, have another piece. You can have another piece. Am I going to get in trouble later? No. This will be a video. I'll make sure all of the stuff is on my website. On film. I'm on. not in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm calling. On my website. Follow me at Will M. Reed on everything else. And uh, look at Instagram. You can see pictures of step-by-step -step stuff. So, thanks so much for Bye. joining us. Bye.